Hi everyone, thank you so much for stopping by. Marine here for Learn Fun. I am back today with this cute snowy wintery interactive card. It was inspired by two cards. This one I made a few weeks ago for the release of the Fall and Winter 2022 collection. And this one that is much older with the interactive Sand Castle. I made it back in June 2019 and it's still one of my favorites. So on today's card, we have some cute mice standing behind a snow brick wall. And this time, they are supporting and cheering on two participants in a snow castle contest. So to make this card, I'm gonna use Snowball Fight for the wall, mice and other details. The castle from Life is Good. More mice from Simply Celebrate Critters. The tree from Car Critters Christmas Add-on and the ones from Winter Skies, the small beanie from Holiday Party Animal, my all-time favorite interactive die set, the Magic Picture Changer die set, and the biggest die from the large stitched rectangle stackable die set. So if you have seen my previous Magic Picture Changer cards, you already know how I like to start that kind of card. But if you are new here, every time I make a Magic Picture Changer card, I always, always start by making the background. And I like to use stencils to create the different parts of my landscape. So I need to divide the panel in several parts. I placed the Magic Picture Changer frame die at the bottom of my panel. And I put all my stamped and die cut images to have a precise idea of the scene. And I am marking the side of the panel using a pencil. On the lower part, we will have snow hills. And on the upper part, we will have the sky. So off screen, I added an extra pencil mark at the very bottom of the panel. I am keeping the panel in place on my work surface using washi tape. And now I am going to use a hill stencils to color the bottom part of my panel. And I am using cracked pistachio oxide ink to do that because to me it is the perfect color to add a subtle frozen look and not just have a plain white section. So I am going to play with the ink and stencils towards the snow brick roll pencil mark and then I will work on the sky.
So the panel is dry. Now we can cut the frame out of it. I am making sure that the notch is at the bottom. I am placing the die in the center and I am lining the edges with the panel edges, securing everything with washi tape and I am running the panel through my die cutting machine to cut the frame. I am using my poking tool to release the frame and I am keeping the small square because we're going to need it later in the video. The next thing I like to do when I make a magic picture changer card is to work on the interactive pocket. So I cut a long panel for the pocket die and a short one for the moving piece die. The paper I'm using is Stratmore Bristol cardstock. It works really well with alcohol markers and it's quite thick, so it's strong enough to support many pulls with the tab. I am tracing each window on the paper using a pencil. And before I forget, the pull tab will be at the bottom of the panel. So I am flipping the panel upside down to have the windows at the top. And now we're going to stamp the castles. First, on the long panel, I am placing the castle right in the center of the window. And on that panel, I want to stamp the front of the castle only. I don't want the sides and the top, so I'm going to mask those parts. Apply L'Enfant Jet Black ink, remove the washi tape, and then stamp the image. And I am going to repeat those steps twice in order to get a very nice impression on the paper. So here the lines need to be fixed, so I'm using my black memento pen to fill those lines a little bit better. And now on the short panel, I am going to stamp the whole castle, no masking on this one. And once again, I'm stamping the image three times to get a nice result. Off screen, I used the coordinating die to cut a mask for the whole castle. And for the front part of the castle, I just stamped the image on masking paper and fussy cut the front part. And you can also notice that I erased the windows, but I kept the four corners. It's going to help us on the next step. So now we are going to use the square to add color around the castles. I am starting with the long panel and on that square, we can see a little bit of cracked pistachio oxide ink at the bottom. So we are going to add a tiny bit of ink below the front part of our castle, just like so. And next, we need to create the same hill. So I am placing the square between the four pencil corners. I'm lining my hill stencil with the hill on the square. I am securing the stencil and removing the square. And then I can add more cracked pistachio oxide ink. And I am going to repeat those steps on the short panel to create the same design. So I am adding the same texture on those panels as the ones I did on the main panel. And now that everything is dry, we can remove the masks and color the images. To give the castles the same frozen look as the snow hills, I am using three shades of aqua. I am adding the darker shade on the edges first. Next, the medium shade. Then a very light aqua shade. 
And finally my colorless marker to blend the colors into the white. And our castles are done. Off screen, I added white highlights and now I'm going to cut my panels. And to place the dies, I'm just using the pencil corners as guides, washi tape to keep everything in place, and then to the die cutting machine. And here we go, perfect! Now I am going to fold the slim tabs on the pocket panel. I am speeding up the video, but those tabs are very slim. So for this step, I always take my time to fold them as straight as possible. And I always use my bone folder to press really well on the fold. Now let's add double-sided tape on those tabs, on the front and at the back as well. And now it's time to start assembling the different pieces. First, I am folding those tabs to stick them at the back of the pocket panel. Once again, I'm using my bone folder to press firmly on those tabs and make sure that everything is connected. The next step is quite important because it helps to get a nice and smooth mechanism. I'm applying powder at the back of the panels, on the flaps and along the slim tabs as well. And I like to use my bone folder to rub the moving piece edges and make them less harsh. Now we can fold our pocket panel in half. Next, we put the moving piece inside the pocket panel through the slot. And then each little flap into a small slot here, just like so. Next, I am pulling the tab to interlock the flaps and slots. I am making sure that the moving piece is lined up between the slim tabs. And now we can peel the backing papers of the tabs and fold our pocket panel to complete the interactive part. I like to pull the tab several times to make sure that everything works properly. And now if we bring the frame back, we can see that the snow hills coordinate quite nicely. So we're going to stick that frame. I added thin double-sided tape at its back along the four edges and I'm attaching it on the pocket. And now we can stick the pocket and the panel on a card base. I'm using double-sided tape and the panel as a guide to attach the pocket. And I am using foam tape to stick the panel and this way be at the same height as the pocket. So we're all done with the interactive background. Now let's bring some cute images. I stamp them using Lanfone Jet Black Ink, cut them all using the coordinating dies, and I'm coloring everything using my alcohol markers. 
and for the snow brick walls and snow details, I am using the same markers as the ones I used on the castles. Now it's time to stick the images on the panel. I'm first starting by trimming the top part of each no brick wall to get a nice straight line to place my critters on. And you can see that I stamped my greeting. At the top I silver embossed happy winter. And at the bottom I stamped in black we have so much fun together. I'm using foam squares mostly to stick everything and a little bit of liquid glue at some places.
Next, the final details. Here we have a little bit of cracked pistachio oxiding poking through. So to hide that and get a clean result, I cut the top section a second time and I'm going to stick it on the first one. We also need to add the decorative handle piece. I cut it out of pink cardstock to match some of the details on the card. And I'm attaching it at the end of the pull tab using liquid glue. And I cut the arrow out of sugar plum cardstock again to match some of the images. And that's it, all done. As always, I finished my card by adding highlights and details on the images and in the sky as well using a white gel pen. And now it's time to join the fun and go cheer on those cute snow builders. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next video. Have an amazing day. Bye.